Hello and welcome to CompScience Simplified. In this video we look into one of the most favorite JavaScript interview questions of all time. Closures. We will get to know what a closure actually is and why this concept is so tricky that most of the interview candidates fail to explain the gist of it. But before getting into the concept of closures, you need to be aware of the concept of scope which we explained in this previous video. Do check that out first if you need a refresher and come back to this video later. Let us first look at the official definition. It basically says that a closure is a combination of a function bundled together with references to its surrounding lexical environment. That does not help us much does it? Let's understand each of the key terms that are mentioned here step by step and see if that leads to a clearer picture. The first of those terms is lexical. Spoiler alert! It is just a fancy name for a concept that we have already discussed in the video about scope. Let us revise the same concept again using this example. We have an outer function and an inner function defined inside of it. Along with that, there is a variable called outer which is declared outside of the inner function. We know that although this variable is outside of the scope of the inner function, we can still access the value of it from inside the inner function. This is because the variable falls under the lexical scope of the inner function, and the rules of lexical scoping allow nested functions to have access to variables declared in their outer scope. With that in mind, now let us look into how closure scope is different from this and what are the situations where it comes into the picture. This code snippet is similar to the previous one but the only difference is that instead of calling the inner function, we are returning it from inside of the outer function. Then, we are assigning that return function to a variable and storing it to call at a later point in time. When the function is finally called, the makefunc function has long been executed and is out of the execution stack. If we only got the definition of the function return from the makefunc function, then there is no way that the value of the inner variable is accessible at the time of calling my func, right? But surprisingly, when we execute that function, we get the proper value of the inner variable logged. And that is because of the concept of closures. The display inner function along with the inner variable forms a closure. In other words, the value of the inner variable is trapped in the closure scope of the display inner function. And that is one of the amazing features of the JavaScript language. The first time you actually understand this concept, your mind would be blown. Let us look at another example to get a better overview of this concept. But before that, leave a thumbs up if you are loving this video so far. The makeadder function that we have here can be called as a function factory. It creates a new function inside of it and returns that function to the caller. We are calling this function with the number 1 which means that the value of x is 1. When the inner function is returned and assigned to the increment variable, that value of x also gets captured in the closure scope of the return function. This is why when we then call the increment function at a later point of time, the value of x, which resolves to the number 1 from the closure, gets added to the argument, and we get the incremented result. And that is the beauty of closures. You might have used them several times in your JavaScript journey unknowingly. But now you understand it in a way to be able to explain it to an interviewer. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.